Hey guys and welcome to today's video. We're going to be going over a question that sounds simple at first but it actually gets quite tricky and you'll see what I mean in just a second. Now this question is probably going to come up on a technical interview um, when you're on the phone talking to a recruiter or you're in the office running on a whiteboard and it might be one of the first or second questions that they ask you. So without further ado let's jump straight into the question. So the question is given a string swap the position of all the vowels and as you can see here we have two examples so in the first example we have the string apples and oranges now what we do is we swap the leftmost vowel with the rightmost vowel and we keep moving inwards until we've swapped all the vowels and we have our output string and in this case our output string is eplas and orangas uh, which sounds like something from a different language, but that's pretty much the idea of it. Now we can see in this situation we have an odd amount of vowels, so U has nothing to swap with, and therefore the U in journal stays in the same location, while the A and the O end up swapping. Take a minute, pause the video, and see if you could come up with a solution to solve this problem on your own. All right, now there are a lot of solutions that come to mind, but the ones I want to focus on include using what's called a runner or a cursor. Now you can think of these cursors as pointers, and each one of these pointers points to a specific character in the string. So let's take two pointers for this example. We're going to use one pointer to start at the beginning of the string and one pointer to start at the end of the string. And what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the character it's pointing at is a vowel or not. Now in this case, A is a vowel. In this case, S is not. So once our leftmost pointer finds a vowel, what we do is we come to the rightmost pointer and we keep moving it inwards until it finds a vowel. Now we can see as we move it to the next value, as uh, which would be E, E is indeed a vowel, and all we have to do from there on is swap it. And we keep on going until each pointer reaches the middle of the string and they're both pointing to the same character, at which point we can stop. So depending on the language you're going to be using, swapping these vowels is going to be a bit tricky. Now here's where the trick comes in. In most languages, strings are immutable, which means you cannot edit characters that are in place. I can't simply change this A into an E and swap it as easily. For languages like C, that would work, but for Python, we can't actually do this in place, which means we're going to have to use extra auxiliary memory. So to do this in Python, if we're given a string, what we're going to have to do is use an extra data structure to keep track of where these swapped vowels will end up. That way we can reconstruct and return the new string. So as you can see here, I am using a hash map. And for those of you that aren't familiar with hash maps, the way it works is it has a key and a value. The key pertains to the value. If you're still having trouble and you don't quite understand hash maps, check out one of our previous videos, I'll put a link in the description below, and you can understand how to use hash maps and come back to this video. So what we're going to do with this hash map is we're going to record the new location for our swapped vowels. So in this case, our first pointer ha finds the vowel A at the beginning of the string. Our second pointer starts at S, and then we iterate it one character inwards, and it goes to E. Now what we want to do is swap the locations of this A and this E. We can see that this A is in location 0 of the string. This E is, I believe, in location 16. And since we're trying to swap the values, all we simply do is put the A in the E's value, which is 16, and the E in the A's value, which is 0. Now we're going to want to continue and do this for every single vowel we encounter. So let's run through a full example just to make everything super clear of how this algorithm works. I've also labeled every single character here uh, by their element index just so it's easier to understand. So when we first start, we're going to initialize two pointers, one at the beginning and one at the very end of the string. Now if the pointer is pointing to a character, uh, sorry, a vowel, we're going to stop it there. So this one is pointing to a vowel, so we're going to stop this and we're going to keep moving this inwards until it is also pointing to a vowel. 
So once both pointers are pointing to a vowel, what we're going to do is we're going to record the indexes that they're found out, so 0 and 16, and we're going to swap the location of them. So E is found at 16, so for 16 we're going to put the vowel we want to swap it with, so A, just like we did before. And at 0 we want E. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue to move this pointer inwards until it's pointing to another vowel, and there it goes, it stops at E. Once we find E, we're going to keep moving this pointer inwards until it gets to the vowel A. Now what we're going to do is simply record the places that they were found in our hash map, so 4 and 13, and we're going to swap the location of it. So at 13 we found A, so we're going to put A in our 4. At 4 we found E, so we're going to put E in the other one, which is 13. Now we're going to keep moving this pointer forward and we get to this A. We keep moving this pointer forward and we get to this O. We're going to record the locations. So at 7 we found A, so we're going to put an O instead. And at 11 we found O, so we're going to put the A there instead because we want to swap them. Now we're going to keep moving inwards until eventually either both pointers overlap or they cross each other. And as soon as they cross each other we can end our algorithm. So now the last matter we have to deal with is simply recreating our new string with these swapped vowels. Now a way we can do that is just iterate through our old string and if the value in our old string is a vowel, we just find the new thing that belongs to be in that index. So we start with the first, uh, the zeroth element and our zeroth element is a vowel. Therefore we check our map and we see that E goes to the zeroth element. So we simply write an E here. We then go to our next element and we see it's not a vowel so we simply append it. Append it again for the next one. We go to the next one and we see that is also not a vowel so we append it and then we go to the fourth element here which is a vowel. So we would simply look at our map and we would say okay uh, what is the fourth element supposed to be? And we can see here a fourth element consists of A. Then we continue doing this until we have the entire string written out. So I've skipped a bit forward just to save you the uh, torture of watching my terrible handwriting, but this is the output we would get. And all we have to do after that is simply return it. In an interview, the recruiter will probably ask you for the time and memory complexity of your solution after you've given it to them. So as we can see here, we're traversing through the string with two different pointers, um, which means because the string has n elements, right off the bat we have a complexity of n for traversing through the string because we have to go through all n elements. Now the only other time intensive operation we have is returning and reconstructing the output string, which will also also have n elements. So in turn we have around 2n um, operations which means our time complexity will be big O of n worst case scenario. Now the memory complexity is a bit more complicated. As we stated earlier, if your language allows you to change the values inside of a string, the memory complexity, the auxiliary memory complexity would actually just be big O of constant, big O1. But in our case, since we can't do that, we actually have to use a hash map and another string to return it. And worst case scenario for the length of its, this hash, hash map, as well as the length of the string we are returning, is also going to be O of n, as in we will, worst case scenario, be storing as many elements as there are in the input string. Now let's take a look at some code. As you can see here, the first thing I want to do is quickly construct a function that can pretty much just tell me whether a character is or is or is not a vowel. Now this is important because you want your code to be very modularized. You don't want random code sitting everywhere and checking whether a string or a character is a vowel or not is something we're going to have to do often. So I'm simply going to create a string with all the vowels inside of it and I'm just going to say if that character that I'm taking in is inside of this string that contains all the vowels, return true, and if it's not, simply return false. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the function where we're actually going to swap the vowel, and we're going to take an input parameter called imp, which is just the initial string. 
Now, the first thing we want to do is set up our pointers and our swap map. So to do that, we're going to get the length of the input string and assign it to this variable input length. And we're pretty much going to make the left pointer and the right pointer. Now, remember, the left pointer actually starts at the beginning of the string, while the right pointer starts at the very last element of the string, which is why I've set these values equal to zero for the beginning of the string and input length minus one for the last element of the string. And now we're simply going to initiate a dictionary slash hash map for uh, storing these swapped vowels. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get our pointers moving inward and checking to see whether or not the character they're at is a vowel or not. So we're going to initialize a while loop and like we said we want this to run until the left pointer and the right pointer have either has either crossed over or hit the same point. So we're going to do if let while left pointer is less than or equal to right pointer. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the left pointer has hit a vowel or not. So if is vowel, we're calling the function we made here, and then we're simply passing in the value, the character that our left pointer is currently at. So we're saying if it's not a vowel, we're going to increment the pointer and we're going to continue. So like we showed in the example, we want our left pointer to keep incrementing through the string until it hits its first vowel. And we do that by incrementing the position of our pointer by one until it hits a vowel. Now we're going to do the same thing for the right pointer. Afterwards, let's say for example, we finally hit a vowel with this left pointer. What it's going to do is it's going to stop continuing through this loop and it's going to go straight into this if statement. So we can see here we keep on checking whether or not the right pointer is a vowel or not. And if it's not, we simply move the pointer inwards over and over again. Now, the condition for our interpreter to get past these two if statements, the only way it can do that is if both pointers are pointing at a vowel. So at that point, we know that both pointers are pointing at a vowel and we can start our swap. And the reason for this is the continue statements in each of these. If it's not at a vowel, we're going to continue, which means we are just going to restart this loop. As soon as you hit a continue, it's sort of like the opposite of a break. Instead of breaking out of the loop, we go back to the top of the loop. So the only way we can get past these two if statements is if, like I said, both pointers are pointing at a vowel. Now, what we want to do when both pointers are pointing at a vowel is simply put the values into our swap map. So what we're going to do is record the swap. So we say swap map of the position left pointer is equal to the character that the right pointer is pointing at. It's exactly like we did on our little hash map diagram below, and we simply do the same thing for the opposite. The position that the right pointer is at is going to hold the character that the left pointer is pointing at. Now, after that, the only thing left to do in this while loop is simply move to the pointer, move the pointers to the next value after the swap. And we're simply doing that the same way uh, we did it before, which is by incrementing the left pointer by one and decrementing the right pointer by one. So we're moving the left pointer in one value, uh, one character, and we're moving the right pointer in one value as well. Now. All that's left to do is reconstruct our new string and return it. So what we're going to do is create a new string, then we are going to for loop through every single character in our input string. And whenever we encounter a vowel, what we simply do is we append the swapped vowel in the original vowel's position, and if we don't encounter a vowel, all we simply have to do is append whatever character is already there. So for all the consonants, um, that's what we're going to do. And finally, what we do is we return the swapped string. So what we can do is actually give it a little example. So for example, input equals apples and oranges, and we can go ahead and actually run this. So when we run this, we can actually see we get the correct input. And we can start testing it out with different strings, like let's say, for example, United States. And if we run it, we see we get the correct string as well. So all in all, the code is around 51 lines. I will be providing, as usual, a link to the GitHub 
uh, to my GitHub repository where you can find all of this code and look at it for yourself. I've documented it. I've put some comments in there to help you guys out. So make sure you check that out if you still don't quite understand uh, what's going on or if you want to give it a further look. And there you have it guys, hopefully that solution helped. You now know how to solve the swapped vowels question. Like I said, all the code will be in the description below, linked to the GitHub. And if you guys enjoyed these videos, make sure you give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe below because we have a lot more content coming out. I've also posted a written solution on Medium, I will link to that in the description as well. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next video.